Hi, welcome to Gorilla Physics. This video is all about how you can study effectively. And I've got some slides here. I've got some evidence, really. This is a scientific way of thinking about how you're going to study. And I'm going to start with Ebbinghaus. And most of what our knowledge of how and why we revise is based on this study by Ebbinghaus. This is what we call the forgetting curve. So essentially, group one, if you like, this group that um, have been taught something once and they understood it well when they taught it. And Ebbinghaus checked that they understood it well, but didn't reteach it until a test maybe six months time and they'd all pretty much forgotten most of it notice that's a really steep curve as well and then another group what they did was they revisited just once two months before the exam and it was very easy to bring them back up to 100 percent recall understanding it all and i noticed the forget forgetting curve is less steep now so they forget less they forget at a lower rate which really appeals to me as a physics teacher i'm sure you can understand <laughs> so um Another group, he retaught again two weeks before the exam. They revisited it and look, they've now memorized almost everything about sort of 80 percent. And the last group, they had a revisit just two days before the exam. And again, they had now managed to recall almost everything. So that is why your teachers are banging on to you about start revising early. It might seem like a long way away. We're now when I'm making this video, I'm just in my October half term, my school. Um, it's about six months still before exams, but you should already be through one or two cycles, certainly through one cycle of revision by now. I would really recommend it to you that you've actually completed, gone over every single thing in your course at least once at this point. We are here like six months before the exam. You should have really detailed notes uh, from those subjects, your exercise books or your revision guides or anything like that. You've got the notes. Now, two months before the exam, you should be reducing them down. This is what Ebbinghaus also suggested was an effective technique for learning this. Reduce them down into some just kind of, um, you know, summaries, maybe a few key diagrams, a few key bullet points. And then two weeks before the exam, reduce that down even further just to uh, outline, select one key diagram for each topic, maybe. And then finally, just two days before the exam, you should be reducing it down to just one line, one key point, a few key words. And the beauty of doing that, actually reducing it step by step, is that you are linking back each stage to the previous more detailed step. So you hopefully you link back that information, just those few bullet points back to the detailed notes there. So this is a way, this model for effective learning, which I'm introducing you to you today, is a way that you can actually think of what you are doing in the exam and when you're revising. And I suggest your revision looks as close to the exam as it possibly can be. When you learn to drive, you don't just copy notes out from a textbook. You actually get in a car and you get behind the wheel and you think about it and you learn to drive by practically doing it. So when you're practicing for exams, you should really be working on exam technique consistently. So every single time you approach a question, I want you to think about it in this way, decode. Decode means, it's not read, it's actually figure out what the question is asking you to do. What information have they given you? What is this, what type of question is this? And we'll talk about command words in a little bit later. Then plan, and please, 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 I implore you, do think about what you're gonna write. You don't have to write an essay plan like in English, but pause and think. I have seen so many answers which start by waffling about what the question has asked them to do, and they filled up half the answer space before actually saying anything useful to add value to the question they've been given. So think carefully about the points you're going to make. Then answer, and because you've answered, you've thought about it already, your answering should be quite mechanical. It should just be like going through it, writing it out. But as you do so, you'll, th you'll think, oh yeah, there's an extra bit of detail I can put in. There's something else I can add in, and that's a really, really useful time. And lastly, check. And check is the most important stage because if you can get as close as you can to actually understanding exactly how the thing's going to be marked, so how you're going to lose marks maybe by you know checking you've got units on your answers, checking that you've got those keywords in there, then that check is going to be the most useful phase. That's where you want to get to in this. That's where you want to get to in your revision is being able to check for yourself your own work. So a lot of people when they're revising, if we look down this right hand side now, a lot of people spend an awful lot of time here in this I don't get it phase. And they're just mechanically kind of copying stuff out, making notes, making flashcards again. And you know, it's not really helping them understand. So you have to think about what you're doing and ask yourself, is it taking you to this next level? Do you actually understand what you're doing? Is it, is it, are you following the explanation that's being given to you? 
But when you win an exam, you need to be able to do it for yourself. So this is where you need to get to, just to pass, just to get a kind of grade four. You're gonna to need to get to this point of, I can do it without help. I can do it on my own in that exam room. That's where you need to aim for. And if you wanna get the very highest grades and the gold standard for whether something is effective as a revision technique is this bit, I could teach others. Now all this, what we've done is what we call a metacognition. So I want you to try out a little bit. I want to try out something called the Feynman technique now. And this is an example of metacognition that I have introduced on my channel before. So these two um, diagrams here should look quite familiar to you. They, they should look, you know, hopefully you're kind of understanding what they're showing. I want you to pause the video now and I want you to try and explain out loud exactly what the diagram shows and how they're linked. All the detail that you can do, if it's a bit of chemistry comes in or a bit of physics, it doesn't matter. All the detail that you can do and what you'll notice hopefully is that sometimes you'll um and you'll uh. So over to you, pause the video, I'll just wait. Okay, I hope you've had a go at that and actually, you know, do have a go if you haven't already because it's a really useful point to rec recognize, did you understand it or not? Did you spend a lot of time um in and erring or did you quite fluently explain that that's beryllium and there's four protons and there's five neutrons and that's in the nucleus. The nucleus is positive and it's orbited by negative electrons. The electrons are in energy levels, not shells. Shells is for chemistry. Um, two in the one, two in the inner energy level and two on the next level. It's a neutral atom because there's positive and negative charge in equal amounts and they're balanced out. You know, if you if you did it quite um, if you did it quite fluently, then you really understand that bit and you don't need to look look that over and you're probably ready to apply that in the exam situation. I'll actually come back to this, but this is a useful way to think about metacognition is diagnosis, therapy and test. And you might have come across that in school before. Diagnosis, figure out what you're missing. Therapy, do some work on it and then test to check that you can actually do it now after having done some work on it. Can you actually do something um, that you couldn't do before? And being able to do that cycle for yourself, diagnosis, therapy and test will get you to that point where you can check your own answers, where you can teach other people. So I'm going to define metacognition for you now. Metacognition is essentially understanding when something is helping you learn and when it is not. It's being able to select the best activity for you for each individual topic. And it's about evaluating your learning. So is what you're doing helping? And honestly, if you think that this is not helping you, if you think that revising in a certain way that you are doing is not helping you, then please stop it. You need to think about it. You don't have unlimited time. It is, the clock is ticking and you need to use that time as effectively as possible. So please don't waste your time. If something is not working, stop doing it and try something different. That's what metacognition is. Now I suggest most importantly what you are doing, your revision is as close to the exams as it can be. So I wanna to talk to you about the assessment objectives in sciences now. So here they are, AO1, and they're very, very similar for all GCSEs and A-levels actually because they're built around what's called Bloom's taxonomy. Taxonomy means something's easier than, uh, than other things. You know, things get harder as you go down the assessment objective essentially. So your first one is just knowledge and understanding. What do you know? What do you remember? That's your knowledge. Or what can you explain? That is your um, that is your understanding. And there'll be command words like state, describe, and explain. So state is just name something essentially. Describe is just um, to say how it is, say what it is, and explain is to say why is something like it is. So that's about forty percent of all marks. Now your next level up is really applying that knowledge and understanding. So they might say use ideas about use ideas about atomic structure to explain this phenomenon. Um, or they might ask you to do some calculation. But really we're getting onto analysis now. If we're dealing with data and things like that, we're getting onto analysis. So an analyze is the higher level skill, AO3. And also in AO3 they talk about evaluating or concluding, judging, and developing practicals, especially in um, sciences. So command words, look out for command words like this, calculate, compare, and when you compare, make sure that you say one thing is bigger than another, make sure you state something about both of them, and then conclude, so actually draw together some evidence to make a conclusion. And the really hardest ones are gonna be things like suggest, you know, something that your teacher hasn't explicitly taught you is a suggest, and evaluate, so can you make a judgment based on some evidence? 
And just remember, I just want to make this point really, that 15% of all question papers in GCC and Dataval Sciences are going to be based around practicals. So I want to talk to you just about some of the things you can do to revise. One of the things we use in my school is Tassame, um, but any kind of online learning platform like Seneca or whatever your school recommends you use that has a kind of machine learning or a quizzing element. If not, then something like Bite Science is really, really good for working on your recall. So working online is really, really good for that knowledge and understanding, just that kind of describe and explain kind of level of remembering stuff. What, what do you need to memorize to take into your exam? That will work really, really well. And especially because they kind of do a lot of the metacognition for you because they're kind of quizzing you and they're learning about you and they're learning your strengths and your weaknesses and they're sending you the next level of quiz. But your revision guides are really, really good and really useful things. But the most important pages in them are the question sections. And again, I think that I can't stress that enough, really. Actually using the questions as like checklists of what do you and don't you know and making sure you are working and the most effective thing, starting with the stuff you are least comfortable with. When you revise, always start from the bit you find hardest. The questions sections are like checklists of exactly what you need to know and be able to do in the exams. Look out also for what your school offers. You know, te teachers are really highly qualified and they're really expensive resources. So make sure you use them and make sure you quiz them. What do I need to know? What do I need to be able to do with this? Is this okay for the mark? All those things, you use the expertise use the expertise of your teachers. That's all been about metacognition. Metacognition is about knowing what you know and what you don't know and knowing how to improve that, knowing how to get from not knowing it to knowing it. It's all about being able to do these things, diagnosis, therapy and test for yourself. So you can, when you get into that exam, you can decode the question, you can plan your answer and you can actually answer it and you can check it and you can feel confident that you can check, you can work out where you've gone wrong in that exam situation to improve your work in that exam situation. That's what's going to get you the highest marks. And as you know, Guerrilla Physics is all about helping you get the very highest marks. So please stay tuned. Here's some playlists for you um, for GCC and A-level for aiming for the highest grades, how I can help you with that. And of course, I have loads and loads of physics teaching it's been a pleasure. Let me know if there's any kind of videos you want to see or anything you want, you want to know more about. Just leave a comment in the description. Thanks a lot for watching. And if you've got some ideas on how you like to learn and things that do definitely help you learn, techniques that you've used, why not dump them in the description as well? All right, thanks a lot.